Suppose our data is given by this data frame with the date time column as the index and at that date and time we have the given pressure and temperature. We can make many different graphs with matplotlib using this by doing import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. If we do plt.figure and specify that the DPI or the resolution of the image roughly 75 is a good value and then we do plt.hist passing the data that we want df sub temperature it doesn't have to be a pandas series a numpy array or a list would work as well. If we output that then we can see a histogram which has on the x-axis the degree celsius and y-axis has the number of items that have that corresponding degree celsius. We have roughly a hundred thousand values that have about 10 degrees celsius. Our graph is difficult to interpret without a title x-axis label and y-axis label so we specify these three things with plt.title histogram of temperature plt.y label frequency finally we do plt.x label saying that this is temperature with degrees celsius is our units and that shows a much easier to interpret graph now histograms are nice but we might also want to track the information over time we will do it for the pressure plt.figure with dpi is equal to 75 is still a good start plt.plot with the DF sub pressure. And that shows from 2009 to 2017 how that information is going to change over time. If we wanted to zoom in on a particular area, we could just subset the data frame and say colon 10,000, for example, to look at the first 10,000, and that will show down to even which day and month that it's going to be. To save time, I'm going to paste in this information where we have the X label as the year, the Y label as pressure in millibars, and title is pressure over time. You could do that for all of these PLT figures. Another very common graph type is the scatter plot. If we set up our figure like we always do, figure and then DPI is equal to 70 five we can make a plt.scatter for scatter plot and this puts points on x and y we will make the x-axis to be pressure and we'll make the y-axis to be temperature we don't want to see all of these values it will just make a bubble and so we'll put only the first hundred values we have to do it for both of those and then what we'll see is on the x-axis we have the pressure and on the y-axis we have the temperature and so if we look at points maybe over here we see it's about 996 and negative 8. if we go back up and look at our data set for a second we have lots of points like this 996 and negative 8 and we have so many different points that are all going to be shown on this plot here, at least the first 100. For graphs like this, it's especially important to properly label your title, y-axis and x-axis. And so again, to save time, I will copy and paste them in here. X label with pressure of M bar, Y label of temperature in degrees Celsius. And the title, generally what you do for scatter plots is your Y variable versus your X variable. And so we'll just call it temperature versus pressure. We see here, this is a much easier graph to read. It's very common to want to put multiple graphs onto the same plot of information. So what we'll do is copy exactly what we have above this will make exactly the same graph but then we'll copy also this scatter line and then put another one right above that so we have one scatter and then another scatter we're not going to make it the same information that would be a little bit silly we'll do the next 100 values so 100 to 200 we need to do that for both pressure and temperature so they match up properly output that and see it automatically assigns this new data here's all the new data a new color but we still have a problem because we don't really know what this is. We have different colors now, so what is this information and what is that information? Well, we specify that with this thing called a legend. So we do plt.legend and then pass a list where in order it matches up with all of the different calls that we made. So we did one scatter, which is this stuff, another scatter, which is this stuff. So we will pass a list where we'll just call this one the first hundred, another item in this list, second hundred, and it outputs this and automatically puts this legend in a nice spot, specifies the blue is the first hundred and the orange is the second hundred. Another really nice graph to summarize one column of a data set is called a box and whisker plot. And we can do that very simply with plt.boxplot. Note that I'm not writing figure. In fact, you don't actually ever have to write figure unless you want to specify the DPI. We'll do plt.boxplot and then pass in one column. We will choose df sub pressure. And what that shows is this box. This is the box and whiskers. These are the two whiskers. And it turns out that anything outside of these whiskers are considered outliers. All these different points that do lie in the pressure column, they are considered to be outliers, and these are considered to be outliers as well. It also makes this box which specifies a few things. It says that the middle 50% of the data lies between roughly 990 and 982 or so, and it specifies that the median value is about 990 itself. We're now going to use some pandas helper functions to make what's called a pie chart, and we'll make this intermittent object called 
called bin series, make that equal to pd.cut. We'll look at df sub temperature, and then we specify the number of bins. If we do bins is equal to four, and then from this object, we will get the value counts of that. And we see this panda series, which has these pairs of values. This is an interval of values, from roughly 7.1 degrees Celsius to 22 degrees Celsius, we have 224,000 values in the temperature column that belong in that range. We have 163,000 values that belong in this range, 26,000 in this range, and 6,500 in this range. What that allows us to do is have these four different categories and we'll make a pie chart. This is going to be the biggest slice of the pie. This will be the second biggest, third biggest, fourth biggest with these four things as their labels. We're now going to get two separate lists where one is going to be this information Information, but each of them will be strings and another will be this information here values is simply equal to the bins series dot to list and we can see what values is is simply those items right there and we will get labels is equal to the list of converting each of these items to a string string of x for x in the bins series dot index this is the index of the column dot to list as well and then we can see that labels is each of those values as a string. And so we'll do plt.figure with the DPI as 75 as before and call plt.py where we say just values here, labels is equal to that labels object we created. We can output that and see our pie chart here. By default, it doesn't show that these percent values are here. All it is is a format string which says that auto percent is the percent of 1.2 F percent percent, and it makes it look much better as well. I'm going to just copy in a pretty title so that it's called distribution of temperature. And we can see here a much prettier pie chart that shows all the different distributions. Another very simple way to view this distribution through a bar chart is simply plt.bar the labels instead of the values and the height is equal to those values. And it's really the same information, except this is the number of items that we have instead of a percentage of a pie. And these are the different intervals. That's pretty much it. If you're not subscribed, you should do that. Drop a like on the video. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.